Welcome back! It's so nice to see you again and today I have a white canvas for you. I have already covered the entire surface with a thin even coat of liquid white so we are ready to start and I want to show you today a nice mountain scene with some very nice grassy areas and some trees and probably we'll spend some time doing some buildings. I have an idea for a couple of houses just out in the countryside, okay? So we'll take off with some Halo Blue on my 2 inch brush. Just some Halo Blue today. Let's make a nice sky in here. And maybe the little, little amount of Midnight Black. Just tap it nicely. And let's go up here and make some crisscross strokes, some X's. And as you can see, the color is mixing with the liquid white and it's getting lighter and lighter as we go down towards the horizon. Take some more color. This is something that I painted ages ago and I thought it would be a nice idea to show today how it was done. Then go and darken the corner a little bit. And just keep blending until you reach the desired effect. A nice blue sky today. I thought we'll do some nice clouds with a palette knife today. Some streaky clouds up here in the sky. Alright. And you can leave some spots here and there that are lighter than the others. So this might show to be some cloud indications. Alright, now very lightly, very gently go across the entire sky and remove the brush strokes. Okay, now I'm gonna take the number 10 knife and let's take some titanium white. Not much paint, but pull it out very flat. Add the least little amount of bright red to that. Let's say that we have a little bit of sunshine going on. And cut off a roll of paint, a very small amount. And let's decide where we want our clouds to be. And we just rub them the same way we do uh, with a piece of land or something. So just come in here and do some nice streaks. Some nice tricky clouds, can you see? A nice effect. You can also paint water like this. Let's have another one in here. And you decide how many or how few you want of these trees, of these clouds, I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. Alright. So I'm gonna take a clean and dry twins brush and we just blend we just pull this and you can also use the brush sideways like this to make more effective street clouds be very gentle with that remove any excess paint that you might have picked up Be very, very gentle. And now, very, very lightly go across. We happen to see such clouds frequently in the sky, so I thought it would be nice for a change to show you some like this. You can also take the fan brush to do this, or you can even tap with a two or one inch brush to do them. But they were very nice, easily made streaky clouds with a palette knife. Alright, let's take and build a mountain today. I'm gonna take some of this white color. I'm gonna take some black, a little bit of Prussian blue, and some Malaysian cream. So I'm gonna have a kind of lavender color purple color, a little bit more of the, black, of the Prussian blue, a little bit more of the black, and 
we mix this thoroughly, put it out very flat, as flat as you want. We really push the paint in here and cut off a nice roll of paint on the edge of the knife. Now let's say that our mountain is somewhere back in here, so let's take and use very, very much pressure in here. Just use a lot of pressure for that. Just push the paint into the fabric and in here a very nice peak. You can have as many or as few peaks you want. And we only care to have a nice outside shape of our mountain here. Nothing to worry about right now on the inside. We're gonna come back and highlight it. Now we're scraping out all the excess paint that we have. And now we're gonna take a drying heat brush. Let's not have a lot of paint on this brush. And we're gonna blend this. So by blending it, we managed to remove most of the paint that we already have on the canvas. So the highlight and the shadow will be applied easier. In here, we pull this down and we always follow the, the lay of the mountain. Small bit in here. And as you can see, the mountain is more distinct on the top than it is on the bottom because there is lots of mist down the bottom of the mountain. Okay. Now we have already a nice uh, mountain shape to play with. Let's build the highlights now. I'm gonna use the big knife once again. And I'm gonna take some titanium white, pull it out as flat as you can get it, at least a little touch of bright red. Just a very, very small amount of bright red. Pull it very flat. And you really need a firm paint for this. Your paint must be very, very firm in order to make it break. Cut off the roll of paint and go up here and using no pressure at all. See? No pressure. Just make nice highlights. And we never, never use our finger onto the blade. We just guide it like this. And never have the knife you know, in a parallel way with the canvas, always lift it up a little bit so you actually spread the paint with the edge, okay? So come up here, no pressure, and follow the angle of the mountain. No pressure at all. Can you see all these bl the breaks and the bumps that you have? It's because we have a uh, very firm paint and there is also not a lot of underpaint in here. Take some more paint. Bright red and titanium white. And the titanium white is here only, I'm sorry, the bright red is here to add sunshine to our mountain highlights. I'm gonna add another peak right in here. And probably there is another one, maybe make it a little bit high, higher this time. It will add more interest. There is a small valley in here. And let's have the slightest of highlight back in here. You can see this will be a peak that is far, far away. I'm going to do the same in here too. Just add the little bit of color. Okay, now let's pay some attention to the shadows. I'm gonna take some titanium white again. I'm gonna take some paler blue with some midnight black, the sky color, but I'm gonna add more paler blue. Make this thoroughly. But I think I need it a little bit lighter because it's far away. Okay, pull this out very flat. 
cut off a roll of paint as we always do. Okay, pull it very flat, cut across, and there you go. So let's go back here and doing the same thing actually with no pressure at all. Follow the angle of the mountain coming here very gently. Pull some paint and do the same here. And it's not bad to bring some paint into the snow of the other, it will bring all this together. We just pull anyway. So I'm gonna come in here and let this paint break. Follow the angle of the mountain and see how we can push this one back. We come in here and as you can see with just one stroke you can push this back. This adds some depth to your painting. Do the same in here too. There we go. Just some nice uh, shadows. Now I'm gonna take the small knife um, I meant the small edge of the knife that's it and we load the edge of this knife by pulling the paint flat as always and come in here and cut it off as you can see we have the roll of paint on the edge of the small knife on the small edge of the knife I'm sorry so let's go up here using no pressure once again and you see how easy it is? You can really snake into the small places like that. In here, you just pull. You do the same here. Very easily done. And you can leave this a little bit darker. There's a lot of shadows going on. You can do that if you want. Just bring all this together. Okay, fix this a little bit. And you can always come back to your highlight color and fix whatever you do not like. Do some white, and I will come up here and make this pick a little bit more distinct. And in order for this pick to look right, we have to give it its private shadow. So we'll come up here. And with just one stroke, we have fixed it. Let's have another small peak. I just like playing with mountains, and it's been a while since we last did mountain. Let's come up here, have a little bit of highlight in here too. A little valley is here for us. No pressure. And always give it the private shadow that we need. No pressure at all when you do that. And as you can see, I darkened the color a little bit in here because it's a bit closer to us. All right. Now we want to have some mist in the bottom of the mountain. You want to take a clean and dry, make sure it's dry, it's very important. And just tap, just tap the bottom of it. But using very little pressure. And only the bottom, can you see that? What we're achieving here, we have mist. We have the liquid white down here, and now that we have made the blending, we just lift, following the edge of the mountain. The mountain goes this way, so we lift the brush this way. And this is to remove the top marks. You can see in here very distinctly our mist, and we also haven't lost the highlight that's underneath. It's just diffused. If you continue tapping, you're gonna lose this nice effect. So let's go to this way too. Always following the angle of the mountain. And in here the same. Lift a little bit. And that easily, we have a nice mountain to play with. I really hope you like that. Okay, now let's come a little bit forward. I want to have a big foothill back here, lots of decent trees that are gonna push our mountain back. So I'm gonna remove the paint that I already have 
I don't think I'm gonna need lavender color once again. Let's remove these two. Save some for later. So I'm gonna take some white, some titanium white. Gonna take some sub green and some midnight black. Mix this thoroughly. We want a kind of grayish, uh, dirty green color. Mix this nicely. And I'm gonna use the fan brush today to make some nice distant trees. Let's have a number six fan brush today. I'm gonna make it a little bit dirtier, I want some more soft green. It would be okay if you mix that from the start with your fan brush, but I just want to save time. And as you can see we have a multitude of colors, some more black. A little bit more of the midnight black, some more soft green, and we're just making excess on the palette, load the brush full of paint, and let's go up here and let's decide where we want our trees to be. So let's come in here and just by tapping, just tap and fill this in nicely. You know my paint is very firm, I'm gonna add the least little amount of paint thinner in order to make it stick better. If you have these problems often, you can just thin it down a little bit, but not much. Remember, paint thinner is probably our worst enemy when it comes to bringing it on the canvas. So be very, very careful. My subgreen in here is very firm. I have removed most of the oil from the tube because when I first bought it, it was very oily and I kind of wanted to separate the pigment from the oil in order to get more true color. So in here I'm just tapping down with my fan brush, making some nice decent trees and try not to make all these the same height. Just tap downward. Add some more paint. And this is very good to bring, uh, to push the mountain back. It's a very, very nice way of adding depth to a painting. You can add multiple layers on a painting using this particular uh, aspect. So let's come above the mountain right now, but as you can see, I'm saving this misty uh, area because it is our separator. Let's bring one in here. and you decide the value of the color, I just use these colors, you could carry on with lavender actually you can do whatever you want okay so I fill this in alright now I want to diffuse all this, I want to have another layer we're gonna paint some nice leafy trees in the front and these uh, distant trees are very easy to make, you just tap downward with your fine brush. It's probably one of the easiest things. And remember to fill in the gaps that you leave in between each of the distant tree. We don't want to have one tree here and one here and one here. We will have to bring all this together because there's supposed to be a lot of trees back in the distance. So you just keep doing it until you fill this in. And as you can see, the paint uh, is getting reduced by the bristles and you have one that is more distinct, one that is not, so this adds interest. It's like this one is closer to us compared to this one. So just let it, let it happen. 
Let the paint and the brass do the work for you. You just hope you do nothing else, seriously. It's very easy. So, I'm taking a big brush now and I'm gonna tap. Just tap. This is the brush that I used to mix my mountain. It has some paint as you can see, but at this point I do not worry because I'm gonna fill this in with dark color. We just want to blend the bottom of these trees here, create some mist. And I push very, very, uh, with lots of power, use lots of strength. I don't worry about the lavender in here. It's gonna work like shadows for me because as I told you, we let the paint and the brush do the work in here we just tap and by the time we have the liquid white underneath we can have easily the illusion of mist okay the more you tap the more you blend so the more the misty effect is now very lightly lift it up so you remove the brush marks and there you go all right Let's take, let's decide what kind of color we want when we come a bit forward. I'm gonna take the same color and I'm gonna take some, some green, some Van Dyke brown this time. Mix this thoroughly. Maybe add some dark sienna, some alizarin crimson. You know, alizarin crimson and some green give us a very nice uh, brown color, it's a very interesting color to have. I'm going to add a little bit of phthalo blue, I don't want it that brown. So if at some point you run out of uh, probably a brown color you have, you can just use sub-green and a little crimson to make your own brown. About equal parts. So let's take this color, I'm going to take now a big brush, I'm gonna use a twins brush today. Let's say this one we made the sky with, it already has blue in it but it doesn't matter. And we pull down the paint in here. We want to have a nice round edge just by pulling. I hope you can see in here that I'm just pulling the bristles. Okay? I'm just pulling through the paint. And let's have some nice leafy trees. Remember to leave some area between the mist and the ground. So we'll come in here and by pushing upward, we just fill this in. And we really, really, we really don't worry about the shape right now. We just want a nice dark background to work with. Some more paint. And nice bush leaves in here, maybe it covers some trees on the background. Okay. Now I'm gonna reverse the brush and just tap beside the lay of the land. As you can see, we're coming this way in the center. And right now it doesn't matter to me because I'm gonna come after that and put another layer of dark color. I'm gonna make it a little bit darker. So I'll tell you what, I decided that I also want to have a couple of evergreens in here. So let's take, this time I'm gonna take the big uh, fan brush. I'm gonna take some of this color, add some more paint. I'm gonna take some, some green, some black, some Van Dyke brown, some crimson, and some Taylor blue. some paint to do some evergreens okay let me clean my knife and let's come with a fan brush loaded full of paint and load the bristles as we always do 
we just want some background trees, not a lot of detail. And let's say that one tree lives in here. We just tap, make a center line, and using just the corner of the fan brush, we come here. And we just tap just a little indication back there of an evergreen tree. Let's have another one. And now you can see the reason I'm regularly using the number three fan brush instead of that. Because it's much easier to use. And you also save some paint. And you can have as many or as few trees as you want. Let's say there is a bigger one in here. Take some more paint. And let's come in here. Just the corner of the brush. Just tap more and more as you go downwards. And this gives us a nice illusion of background trees. Tell you something. I also decided I want to have a big tree in here, a big leafy tree that lives behind the bushes. So I'll show you something different. I'm gonna take a one inch brush and I'm gonna go into some of my leftover paint. This dark paint, take some dark sienna too. And let's say that we want to have a leafy tree. So we have three steps to do. We first add the dark color of the shadows of the leaves then we add the trunk and then the highlights so we actually come uh, closer to us we start with some leafy indications back here on the tree so right now it seems like these leaves are floating okay these are the leaves that we want to have now I'm gonna take some dark sienna and some Van Dyke Brown on the filbert brush and I will go into some of my titanium white with one side so we have light color on one side and dark on the other let me remove a hair that I found in here so this way we manage to achieve both a highlight and shadow on the tree trunk okay so we come up here and as you can see, we have already highlighted the tree trunk without doing anything. And you can go back and redo it, give it an arm. That easily. Alright? It's very easy to do. So let's put some highlights on our trees and bushes here. I'm gonna go into some paint thinner with my other one's brush and go into some canyon yellow gonna use a lot of paint and take some of this dirty color we have here some sub green that we have left some phthalo blue well I managed to run out of sub green my fault but it's okay you can use phthalo blue and have a very nice green color a little bit more and play through the yellows you can also add some midnight black let me add some more paint in there be very careful we don't want much just enough to make the paint stick alright load the bristles full of paint and let's go up here first and just by gently gently tapping gently pushing you can create thousands and thousands of leaves that live up here. And this is a very, very gentle touch. As you can see already, we have a nice leafy tree to play with. I'm gonna add some bright red my color. Now let's go to the bushes. Let's go up here. Be very, very gentle while tapping. a nice 
green bush lives there. Maybe there is another one in here. And you really have to make these bristles bent. It's very important to have the correct uh, highlighting here. And now I have added some bright red to my yellow ochre. We have kind of dirty yellowish color. And as you can see, we have pushed the tree trunk back here. Remember to layer these bushes. And I can guarantee you when this painting dries, you won't believe of the effects that you have made with this kind of brush and this technique. Let's take some midnight black, make a dirty green color. Let's go up here. Another nice bush lives in here too. And if you have problem making your paint stick, just add the least little amount of paint thinner or a liquid white or clear, whatever suits you. And always remember to layer this. Add a little bit more of the cannon yellow. And we have this kind of dirty green bushes in here today. Let's build this one now. And now in here another nice bush lives. You can use whatever brush you want for that. I just thought it would look nice to use the one inch brush like this after a while. Gonna make a red bush now. Take some bright red and make this purple. Indian yellow, yellow ochre, phthalo blue to green the paint, cadmium yellow is our base. Let's have a nice bush in here. And this will give you good practice. I really hope you give this painting a try. Send me a message of the results. Tell me if you have found any problems, something you couldn't do. I'm more than willing to help you. Alright, now in here I want to make some grassy areas, I want to have a wild grass in here, okay, so I'm gonna take the same brush, load it the same way we actually pull the paint down as I showed, showed you before, and we'll come in here and I'm gonna tap upwards, okay, I'm gonna push in here and just, you can see how many leaves we have very easy to do and I don't think it's something we've done before you can also use uh, the fan brush to do that I just prefer to use the one brush it has more bris bristles and I think it looks better and in here we're gonna do the same can you see how many brush areas you can build like that just by pushing outward. Alright, now I'm gonna darken the color that's underneath a little bit. I'm gonna add another layer. So I'm gonna take some black, some Prussian blue, just brush mix them. Take some Van Dyke brown, some crimson, some more of the browns. We're working in brown tones today when it comes to foliage and grass. So let's come in here and just push, push upward. And the closer we are to the one that sees the painting, the darker the color will be. And you actually need to pull the paint, same way we did with the highlight. Make sure you cover the white spots here. And it doesn't matter if you come above some of your highlights because you're gonna repaint them and gonna add more interest like that. Just push. I'm gonna add some 
Perhaps I'm going to that. So of my rounds and build another layer. Just push upward, use a lot of pressure for that. And do the same in here. Okay. We we'll fill this in nicely. We have actually layered even the grass. It's very, very important to have layers. So, as promised, I want to have some buildings today. Let me scratch a few sticks and twigs right here. Separate my bushes a little bit. And when you paint bushes, always remember to leave some dark areas in between. This is gonna add depth and interest to the painting. If you're just scratching, scratching with a clean knife, let the canvas show through. All right, now let's have a small cabin back here and let's decide where we want our cabin to be. So I'm gonna come in here, scratching a basic shape of it, but very, very basically removing some of my uh, leftover paint. Let me take the small knife, it sneaks easier at some point. And you're not committed when you do that. Use the small edge of the knife. And we're removing some of the loose paint that's underneath so our paint is gonna stick better. Okay. And let's go into some, let me clean my palette here. I'm gonna use a small knife for this one. Let's take some Van Dyke Brown, pull this very flat and cut off a roll of paint. So let's make the roof. Let's go up here and make the roof. Make the outside first and fill this in. Just fill this in. I'm using straight Van Dyke Brown. Make the roof first. And use as much paint as needed. Now in here, let's say that the building comes in here. Fill this in. If you have more paint, to spend, you can always remove it. You can never remove enough. The canvas has what it needs to have. So I'm gonna come in here, make a little cabin, small house or something. Just add the dark color first and then we'll come back to highlight it. Mainly dark color. You don't have to worry if you have some paint that is not straighted. You will come back and fix it with highlight. All right. Now let's take the same, the same knife. Let me fix the outside here first. bring this together. And now I'm gonna take some titanium white, some dark sienna, and leave it like marble. Take a small roll of paint and we're gonna highlight the inside of the house. Very gently caress the inside. Take some but that brown again and come above this and this add this adds more interest with blending the color so it looks like old wood okay now I'm gonna take some of the same color but I'm gonna add some bright red to that actually I will make another pile I'm gonna take some bright red some dark sienna 
with a least little touch of white and I'm gonna pull this flat and just have a nice small roll of paint on the edge of the small knife let me clean my finger so I'm gonna make some tiles in here just touch with a small edge and start from the bottom and then work upwards load the knife as necessary in here do the same just some nice tiles take the same color on the big side of the knife and add some on the other side too and you can come back and forth and fix the tiles it's very easy to do okay let's take some titanium white and some phthalo blue some Van Dyke brown and this will be the shadow color of our cabin. Take a roll of paint and just very gently caress the side. Let's give this cabin a door. I'm gonna remove this uh, paint we have already. I'm gonna take some but that brown the same way. And in here I'm gonna add a little door that's easily. Now let's take some titanium white and try to separate the aspects of this painting, of this cabin in here. Make some boards just by scratching the painting here. This is an old wooden cabin. Take the least little amount of titanium white and go in here and separate each aspect of the cabin just very very little paint in here some more in here okay now we're gonna do a cabinectomy work our perspective right and let's step back and see what we have we have a nice old looking kind of cabin come in here and fix the bottom of it with some of the highlight grass color be very careful not to paint above the whatever we've built just push in here so you can actually push it back the cabin with the grass and let's now take and build another one this will give you good practice let's make a bigger one here let's say that this is probably a small bar or something that's behind you can change your mind if you want and let's come in here now we are gonna have a big house scratching uh, the roof same way we did earlier this is easier to do because it's bigger and you're not yet committed okay remove the loose paint and the more paint you remove the easier it will be for you to build the cabin And we'll do the same procedure with our Van Dyke Brown, fill the same. Always try to work your perspective right. Take more paint if you need. And let's come in here too. And let's fill the same. Fix this a little bit.
and you can play with this as much as you want. Fill this in nicely. Lots of paint. Now in here I want to make the outline a little bit more distinct so it gives me guidance. Fix this one. And let's take the small knife now. It sneaks much better in there. As you can see, you can just pull down and fill this in with dark color I'm using Van Dyke Brown. All right. This is a nice old building. Now I'm gonna take I'm gonna take the big knife. Let's take some more white and sienna. Some more dark sienna. And as always we cut off a little roll of paint, leave it marbly and go up here and do something else. We just touch and tap and work downwards, okay? So we just go like this. And can you see how many nice tails you have? Just by touching with a roll of paint. Very, very easy to do. Just touch. And in the other side, I want it a little bit darker because there is no light. Fix this up a little bit. And I'm gonna take some of the same light color go down here and just caress it. Take some Van Dyke Brown as we did earlier. Bring it all together. And this is where we need the firm paint, otherwise we would have a lot of uh, mud mixing going on. And I'm gonna take some white, some Thalo Bloom. And we already have some Van Dyke Browns be some shadows in here by the time the light comes from the right and just touch and let it happen take the smallest knife and do the same here same way we did the mountain, no pressure at all and let's make this uh, with slabs just scratch in some It gives us the illusion that this building is very, very old. About to fall down. Let's give it a big door. You can always change your mind if it is a house or not. A barn or something. I'm gonna come up here. There you go. And let's have the cabin next to me once again. And we'll come back and take some of our yellows, take some pale blue to make green. And let's have some grass. Probably these are some abandoned old houses or barn, who knows. And as you can see, we actually push back the building by going above with our highlight color and try to follow the lay of the land as you can see we're coming here in the center just fill this in and we just tap just tap and when this dries it's gonna give you a different feeling it will be very very different from now because right now the paint is wet but when it dries you can actually see the leaves in here in here we 
try not to let our brush slide we just push push upward with our one inch brush play through the colors and I really hope I help you with any problems you had with cabins, with mountains it's been a while since I last did them and this will give you good practice, that's for sure now let's say that there is an old path in here let's paint an old path I'm gonna take let's take the fan brush remove some of the dark color and let's go into some Van Dyke brown and let's decide where our path is, probably it comes from back here and comes forward to us, it's back here in the trees is a small corner and around this, and the closer you get the bigger and darker it's gonna be the more we push the more paint we're gonna have there we go you just rub, it's nothing to worry about you could also use the, the knife for that it's very very easy to do and you can also take the same brush and go some into some titanium white as you can see it's the same brush, I've not washed it and go up here and very very gently highlight this white and go across like this make it as straight as possible okay and now we'll cover all this with grass it seems that grass has reclaimed this part of the land and it brings this all together in here we do the same just bring in some grass into the path very easily okay and I think we have a completely painting it's very easy to do it will give you good practice and in here I have a part of the cabin of the house that I don't like so you can actually go in here and say that we have a bush that comes right in front of our building and you can cover it that easily and it also adds depth so whatever happens whatever mistakes you think you've done you can just keep working on them and we have come to an end I really hope you enjoyed today's episode it will give you good practice uh, introduce you some new moves like the clouds or the grass so until next time happy painting I wish you the best and I'll see you soon.